I welcome you again for this NPTEL course on earthquake geotechnical engineering and we almost are done with the uh, 25 percent one fourth of the course and today we are going to have lecture number 16 which is again part of the module 2. We are under chapter 3rd of the module 2 uh, where it is like in the module 2 which is on dynamic soil properties. Two chapters concept of stress and stress pass and field test has been already completed. In the laboratory test we have started this chapter last uh, in the last lecture on 15th and today lecture number 16 and uh, like today uh, uh, 16 and 17 two another lectures will be there on this laboratory test. So, as we discussed earlier there are total three lectures on a laboratory test. So, this is the second one and then we will have one more on it. So, let us uh, what we have covered in the lecture uh, this is uh, part of this uh, laboratory test that is the chapter number 3 of the module 2 and what we have done in the lecture number 15 which is listed here. So, we have talked about in the uh, laboratory test and how to co uh, collect the sampling for the laboratory test has been discussed. Then we have discussed low strain element test, however in the low strain element test in last lecture we have discussed only one test which is a resonant column test or in the short called resonant column apparatus that is RCA. So, now let us discuss what we are going to talk today in this lecture number 16 topics which we are going to cover. First of all there are two other tests uh, which is on the low strain element test which we are going to discuss today. One is ultrasonic pulse test another is piezoelectric bender element test. Then we are also going to talk high strain element test which include three tests cyclic triaxial test, cyclic direct simple shear test and cyclic torsional shear test. So, as a result we will complete today low strain element test as well as uh, going to complete high strain element test. Now, let us talk the first one low strain element test and the within this first category ultrasonic pulse test. So, these when we talk about uh, low strain test naturally the level of strain is low compared to what you have in the high strain test and the low strain test are more uh, resembles with the wave propagation and as a result wave propagation velocities can be measured in the laboratory by means of the ultrasonic pulse test. Ultrasonic transmitters and receivers are attached to platens that can be placed at each end of a specimen with the distance separating them carefully measured. So, what is done here in the ultrasonic pulse test? Suppose you have a soil specimen which may be cylindrical or like you know this uh, may be uh, rectangular in cross section uh, you may have uh, cubic. So, one like uh, you uh, in the there are two things. So, you attach one here another sense receiver here and there is a mechanism for recording. So, this is your specimen and specimen which is in this case soil specimen and this is complete the circuit. So, this is your data acquisition system which records here you have the receivers uh, like uh, uh, you have this uh, uh, transmitters here. So, here you will have let us say A point and B points A and B you have transmitters which will transmits the waves. What you you know the length of the specimen which is let us say h and the travel time from A to B is known then you can find the velocity V L delta uh, which may be h divided by delta t travel time taken. So, it is a simple that you find out the travel time for uh, given distance. Continue with this the transmitters and receivers are made of piezoelectric materials which exhibit. So, in the what is the basic property of the piezoelectric materials that there will be changes in the dimension when there is they are subjected to voltage across their faces or other way we can say if there is a changes in their dimension there will be changes in the voltage which is recorded. So, and which produce a voltage across their faces when distorted. So, both are linked if there is a change in the voltage that means there is a distortion if there is a distortion then there will be change in the voltage. So, this is the like basic for the ultrasonic pulse test a high frequency electrical pulse which is applied to the transmitter causes it to deform rapidly and produce a stress wave that travel through the specimen toward the receiver. So, you have a like a, a yeah. So, ok yeah here one will be basically this should be like you know that uh, so, A 
will be treated as a transmitter and B will be receiver. Sorry about that. So, you have from you transmit the wave from A point and B will receive and distance is known. So, one is transmitter and another is receiver and that will travel through the specimen toward the receiver and the ultrasonic pulse stress when the stress waves reaches the receiver it generate a voltage pulse that is measured. So, whatever the difference in the voltage it will be measured and the distance between the transmitter and receiver is divided by the time difference between the voltage pulses to obtain the uh, wave pr propagation velocity which we have already discussed. The ultrasonic pulse test is particularly useful for very soft materials for example, even sea floor sediments very soft materials can be performed while the soil is still in the sampling tube. Keeping the soil in the sampling tube uh, without taking out of the sampling tube still this uh, test can be performed. Now, the second one in the low strength category of the for the level test is uh, like we in fact, it is third one the first one we have already discussed that is the RCA, second was ultrasonic pulse test, third is piezoelectric bender element test. So, in case of piezoelectric bender element test, it allows measurement of shear velocity on laboratory specimens uh, using piezoelectric bender elements. Bender elements are const, uh, constructed by bonding two piezoelectric materials together. So, it is two different uh, like piezoelectric materials which are like you know that they are bonded together in such a way that a voltage applied to their faces causes one to expand while the other contracts causing the entire element to bend as shown in the figure. So, what you have here in this case you have these piezoelectric band uh, here. So, what we see that there are two piezoelectric elements they are like you know in this case uh, this is 0 voltage there are 3 positions here in this figure shown the center position is 0 voltage position neutral positions. So, in that case both remain con in contact and the same length, but when the positive voltage is applied then what will happen one outside will expand while the inside wind will be the contract. So, there is a contraction of one element for example, in positive case this is contracted and this is expanded, but if you apply the negative voltage this is other way around. So, it will be opposite and they are on the bearing plate. So, this is piezoelectric bender element positive voltage causes elements to bend one way and negative will be naturally on another way and this is arrow is showing direction of shear wave propagation. So, this is in the similar fashion a lateral disturbance of the bender element will produce a voltage. So, the bender elements can be used as both S wave transmitter and receivers. So, it can be transmit as well as it can receive one in fact, uh, these are used in a pair ultrasonic pulse test also in case of so one will be transmitter another will be receiver. In most setup the bender elements are stick from the opposite ends of a soil specimen a voltage pulse is applied to the transmitter element which causes to produce an S wave. So, basically there is not much difference in ultrasonic and the uh, this bender element test uh, both are piezoelectric material. The second thing is that in this case bender element test you you need, uh, have two uh, like principle and then in that case one uh, contract inside one will contract outside will be expanding. When the S wave reaches the other end of the specimen distortion of the receiver element produces another voltage pulse and the time the similarly the time difference between the two voltage pulses is measured with an oscilloscope and used to divide distance between the tips of the bender elements to give the shear velocity of the specimen. So, once you noted down the time difference the distance between transmitter and receiver is already known. So, distance divided by the time will give the shear velocity. The these elements have been incorporated into conventional and cubical triaxial devices, direct sample shear devices, odometers and modal test. In fact, uh, like uh, there are different devices uh, we have used it using the cyclic triaxial test. Uh, so, cyclic triaxial apparatus which we are going to talk later. So, with that this can be used. The difference uh, like piezoelectric bender elements are low strength test. In fact, uh, 
and the, uh, the specimen is not disturbed here during the bender it can be successfully tested for other soil characteristics. Most of the important application of bender element test is to find what we call the maximum value of shear velocity V s max and V s max is you know the link with the G max which is G max by rho. So, what we do we find the VM, V s max using bender element test and then you can calculate the value of G max equal to rho V s max square. So, this is the most important application and the reason being simply because it is a very low strength test. So, this is used to find the maximum shear velocity. So, with this we have done with uh, low strain element test. Now, let us talk about high strain element test. In high strain element test we are going to talk about three tests. One is cyclic triaxial test, cyclic direction per shear and the last one is cyclic torsional shear test. Uh, the first one is the most popular one cyclic triaxial test and this is like you know that an extension of the normal triaxial test uh, which is used uh, at the undergraduate laboratories also. So, there is a, a little difference in the cyclic triaxial test. So, let us talk about the you know, continue with the high strain element test. First thing is that higher sh uh, strain shear strain amplitude soil will generally uh, have two types of behavior. One is there may be uh, exhibit it may exhibit volume changes tendencies. If it there will be change in the volume if you allow uh, the drainage is allowed that means uh, in that case pore water pressure will not be developed and it will uh, there will be change in the volume. So, this is manifested in two form in case of drain loading when you allow the drainage the first condition then there will be uh, volumetric change tendency will manifested in what we call the volumetric strain. There will but no development of pore water pressure. So, in this case you can note down that there will be in this case uh, because you are along the drainage no pore pressure develops pore pressure develops. But in the another case under undrained condition there will be change in the pore pressure, but it will happen at constant volume there will be no this will happen at constant volume. So, if drainage is not allowed then there will be development of pore water pressure. So, and this in this case because you know that soil behavior is governed by the effective stresses. So, all methods of testing soils at high strain level must be capable of controlling pore water drainage. So, if you want to control the pore water drainage in that case you need to have like you know that uh, there will be uh, uh, equipment which, which are able to measure the pore water pressure from the specimen and massive and at the same time there could be you know the partially there may be development of pore water pressure there could be a combination also it is not there necessary because depending on how for how long you apply uh, allow the drainage you may not allow the drainage completely partially in that case there may be change in the volume as well as development of pore water pressure. So, uh, like in the high strain element test let us first talk about the cyclic triaxial test as I mentioned that this is the most popular test among all three and we will talk about the cyclic triaxial in detail and then about two other tests also. So, cylindrical triaxial uh, cyclic triaxial test a cylindrical specimen of the use place which is placed between top and bottom loading platens and this is surrounded by a thin rubber membrane. So, the sample will be surrounded by rubber membrane. The specimen is subjected to a radial stress usually applied pneumatically and in axial stress. So, you have radial stress is applied all around the specimen like uh, here you can see this figure here yeah. So, let us discuss this figure first. Here you have the soil specimen which is cylindrical and this soil specimen is surrounded by rubber membrane. It could be normally you know this is uh, like, uh, like uh, this is, uh, in this specimen is not dry it have the moisture and it is surrounded by the rubber membrane and at the top and bottom you have o ring for sealing it this one. Then you have the cell wall so and all this rubber membrane as well as the sample is surrounded by uh, this is inside the cyclic triaxial chamber and in the side chamber you have this fluid. So, you have the fluid here 
and then in this case cell pressure is there and axial load is applied which is in this case cyclic axial load is goes up and down that is cyclic basically that means you can control its uh, amplitude as well as frequency and then for the measurement of the load you have the load cell while you have the LVDT which measure your volume change uh, the displacement linear voltage uh, displacement transducers. So, this was the cis schematic of the typical triaxial apparatus. The by virtue of these boundary conditions in the triaxial truss principal specimen stress size in the specimen are always vertical and horizontal. So, one will be vertical and horizontal. So, you will see that vertical stress is maximum principal stress and the horizontal stress is the mi minimum principal that is the minor principal stress. So, we will discuss uh, how it uh, applied. The difference between the axial and the uh, radial stress is called the deviatoric stress. In fact, uh, uh, the how the stresses are applied let us discuss that first. Uh, uh, and that uh, deviatoric stress is applied cyclically either under stress control condition or under strain control condition. So, you have let us say this cylindrical specimen and this specimen is subjected to what we call the confining pressure all around which is the radial stress sigma c which is applied radially sometime it is written sigma r also and this sigma c is applied are uh, not only around this shaft, but this is applied at the top as well as bottom. So, that means this sigma c is also applied here. Sorry. So, you have here this is also applied sigma c. In addition to this in axial direction you apply one more stress which is called sigma d. So, all together uh, the total in the axial direction which is called sigma 1 which is sigma a is nothing but sigma c plus sigma d. And in the radial direction which is the minor principal stress sigma 3 is same as a sigma c. Okay. So, as a result deviatoric stress sigma d can be called sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So, deviatoric stress is the difference of major principal stress and minor principal stress. And you see the major principal uh, stress in this triaxial thrust is applied vertically in the axial direction sigma 1 while sigma 3 is applied in the all around. But sigma 3 is applied here, here, here as well as here as a result you need to add only sigma d on the top to get the major principal stress. So, the difference between major and minor principal stress will be simply uh, sigma d. Now, coming to here the deviatoric stress is applied cyclically under either under stress control or strain control test. What is the meaning stress control and strain control test? Two types of tests are popular in cyclic triaxial. In a stress control test the maximum stress is fixed while testing that means, during the test you will not exceed that maximum stress you set up the maximum value of stress and then strain you find the corresponding strain then custom. Similarly, in the strain control test maximum value of strain is set out and then then uh, you you uh, do uh, you noted down the value of stresses corresponding this we already discussed. Continue with the cyclic triaxial or they are most commonly performed with the radial stress held constant and the axial stress cycled at a frequency about 1 hertz. So, normally for the samples uh, they are tested at about 1 hertz frequency though uh, most of the cyclic triaxial system including which we have at IIT Roorkee is capable of quite high frequency include 10 hertz or even more than that. But for the soils you do not require so high frequency otherwise because the soil sample will fail immediately if you have very high frequency. So, normally testing is done either 1 hertz, 2 hertz or 3 hertz like this rather than more than 5 hertz. The cyclic triaxial test can be performed under isotropically consolidated or anisotropically consolidated conditions thereby producing the stress path which is shown later. So, there are two conditions one is isotropic and another is anisotropic. So, the first case here there are three cases A, B, C. On the left hand side there are two figures. So, on the left hand side you have time versus deviatoric stress on y axis you have the deviatoric stress 
half of the derivative stress that is sigma d by 2 on axis of time how it is varying with the time. So, you see in the first case which is for basically for isotropically con consolidated condition when you have the isotropically conditions that means the stress applied in both the direction whether positive or negative will have equal. So, the which is reflecting here it looks like a sine wave. So, it is a sine wave. So, you have 0 here maximum at b and then c again 0. So, here in this case a case the amplitude in the positive and negative direction is same. So, if you measure this this will be the same thing steady state move here. And if you uh, draw the corresponding stress path a and c will be at 0 positions while b will have q value of q as sigma d by 2 same ordinate and p will be uh, changing because you are moving uh, like uh, when you, you, you have this uh, uh, difference you have the higher value of sigma d. So, the p value will increase here, but this was the case for isotropic. Now, b and c are cases for anisotropic conditions that means the anisotropic means on the amplitude in the positive and negative side is not the same. So, you could see in this case it is quite uh, more great uh, greater in positive side, but less in the negative side and the corresponding stress path is for the point this point is this is at the like uh, this is a starting point and then you get the peak values and then you come back here. One point is important here. So, in this case you have uh, in the B case the NSO condition is cyclic derivative stress amplitude greater than the derivative stress during consolidation. So, derivative stress during consolidation is here from here to here. This is derivative stress during consolidation. While the first part the amplitude of the uh, cyclic derivative stress amplitude so, cyclic derivative stress amplitude will be double of this. So, if I like peak to peak double amplitude basically. So, this this value double amplitude is greater than this. So, if I say this is A, this is B. So, in this case A is greater than B. Okay. So, A will be greater because A is start from here to a double amplitude. But in the second case my double amplitude will be like this, this is A and B will be this value from 0 to peak value. So, in this case second case A will be less than B that means double amplitude is less than the positive values of this. So, what happens as a result? you do not get any stress reversal always it is positive whether peak value is also in positive direction and then uh, you have the trough which is also in the positive direction. So, in the C case so in this case C case there is no stress reversal while in like you know the B case there is stress reversal. If you have A equal to B if we have a condition A equal to B then there may not be any stress reversal again, but then the uh, the uh, trough will uh, uh, take the value zero, so it will uh, it will touch this line to at zero when uh, it comes down. So you have the peak values and then it is coming down. So this was about stress reversal. Continue with this uh, cyclic triaxial test. The stresses and strains measured in the cyclic triaxial test can be used to com compute the shear modulus and damping ratio. So, the most important is that it is used for the shear modulus and damping ratio that means you find the value of g <coughs> and uh, damping ratio which will be used for uh, for example, using for equivalent linear model which we will discuss later. The cyclic triaxial test they allow the stresses to be applied uniformly although stress concentration can exist in the cap and the base and this allows drainage condition to be measured accurately or controlled. So, the good point with the cyclic triaxial is that you can measure the drainage condition uh, you can control the drainage condition. If you allow the drainage then there is no development of pore water pressure. If you do not allow then there will be development of pore pressure which can be also measured in this case. 
uh, when you want to convert a standard triaxial testing machine which is without like you know uh, standard means it is basically for the static case rather than uh, cyclic loading then it requires only minor modification that means you require a actuator which may apply the loading in the vertical up and down with uh, uh, with control on your amplitude and frequency another but the limitation of this cycle cannot it cannot model stress condition that exist in most actual seismic wave propagation problems so mostly like you know that it can model but the stress conditions will be difficult to reproduce then there could be bedding errors and system compliance effects generally limit the measurement to shear strength which is greater than about 0.01% so that means normally triaxial testing as we said this is for high strain testing and the strain level of strain should be more greater not smaller than this value in general however still uh, it can produce uh, sometime uh, like you know that uh, local strain measurements can be done as low as 0 0.001% uh, 0, 0, so at quite low but this is local uh, so local strain measurements rather than the global strain measurement but in general we should stick to this range that this is greater than this one strains are greater than shear strain so i is like here let me use this so sorry about this so basically it is already listed so just it is colored is there so strain greater than about 0.01% so this was about all about cyclic triaxial test so most important issue is for the finding the shear modulus and damping but this cyclic triaxial is also used for one most important application which is liquefaction studies now cyclic direct simple shear test the cyclic direct simple shear test is capable of reproducing earthquake stress conditions much more accurately than is the cyclic triaxial test. So, compared to cyclic triaxial it is better more accurate and this is also used uh, commonly used for liquefaction testing as was the case for the cyclic triaxial. But cyclic triaxial is also used for shear modulus and damping ratio while the cyclic simple shear is mostly used for the liquefaction. In the cyclic direct simple shear test a short cylindrical specimen is restrained against lateral expansion by what we call the ridge boundary platens which is a different uh, like inventors name Cambridge type device a wire reinforced membrane which is NGI type device where NGI stands for uh, a Norwegian geotechnical institute or a series of stacked rings which is SCI type device. So, what you have in this case this is NGI type device which is NGI cyclic uh, uh, simple shear apparatus and here soil specimen is contained within wire reinforced rubber membrane. So, here you see this is your soil specimen yeah which is written here. So, soil specimen is highlighted here and soil specimen is on the base plate it is situated you have this porous stones on the bottom as well as top and then. So, what is done in this case? In this case soil specimen is moved horizontally it is on the roller this is horizontal load cell. So, this apply the loading here and this plate moves in the horizontal direction and when it moves in that case you can measure the elevity there is a elevity for horizontal displacement how much it get displaced due to the shaking. So, because our objective in the uh, seismic analysis is more for the lateral loading rather than the vertical loading. So, because in the cyclic uh, this cyclic direct simple shear test you are applying the horizontal load itself. So, as a result this test is considered to be better or more accurate compared to cyclic traction. By applying cyclic horizontal shear stress to the top or bottom of the specimen the test specimen is deformed in the same way as an element subjected to vertically propagating shear waves in case of cyclic traction. The simple shear apparatus or applies the shear stress only on the top and bottom surfaces of the specimen that means uh, it apply on the top as well as bottom but not in between. 
since no complementary shear stress are imposed on the uh, uh, sides, the mo moment caused by the horizontal shear stress must balance by non uniformly distributed shear and normal stresses. So, you the shear shear stress is applied only one phase on the horizontal phase, not on the vertical phase. So, as a result, you may get uh, like you know that uh, force will balance, but there will be coupled. So, that is balanced by the uh, deformed shape of the uh, specimen. So, here the effects of non uniformity of stresses can be reduced by increasing the diameter or height ratio of the specimen and such effects are considered to be uh, are small if diameter to height ratio are greater than about 8 to 1. So, that means you are uh, like uh, you have this uh, specimen which is diameter is quite high compared to its height. This, so, that it looks like a disc where your thickness is small, but diameter is large 8 times of the thickness of this. So, in this case uh, like because here no complementary shear stress is applied. So, what you have the deformed shape like this then only it can sustain you have the shear stress acting this phase and this phase, but no not nothing on the vertical phase. So, it is possible because if it is this is ok, but if I say it is like you know the rectangular and then I apply this, so then this is not possible because no complementary shear stress is applied. So, this is ok, but another combination where you have the rectangular in that case you require the complementary if I apply the shear stress on these faces then I need to apply the shear stresses here also in opposite. So, they will be going clockwise anti clockwise and they will create anti clockwise. So, they will balance here, here balancing is done by this deformed shape. So, out of these three first and third is possible second is not possible. So, this was about cyclic direction pulse shear test continue with this conventional simple shear apparatus are lim, uh, have their limited ability to impose the initial stresses which is other than those corresponding to what we call the K naught conditions. A small scale bi uh, directional cyclic simple shear apparatus have also been developed. Now, the last one and the cyclic torsional shear test for the case of uh, high strain test. Uh, what many of the difficulties which are associated with the cyclic triaxial test and cyclic direct simple shear test can be avoided by loading cylindrical uh, soil specimen in torsion. So, here you apply axial loading in cyclic triaxial, the horizontal loading in case of cyclic direct simple shear test. However, in the torsional you apply the torsional in the you use normally cyclic torsional shear test, it will allow you isotropic or anisotropic initial stress conditions and can impose cyclic shear stresses on the horizontal planes with continuous rotation of principal stress axis. So, there are rotation of principal stress axis that is these cyclic torsional shear tests these are most commonly used to measure the stiffness and damping characteristic over a wide range of strain levels to increase the radial uniformity of shear strengths for example, which are the some of the researchers develop the, uh, what is called hollow cylinder cyclic torsional shear apparatus. So, the whole the, that is sometimes called hollow cylinder apparatus is uh, uh, so that is also used in this case. The this looks like this one in the cyclic torsion this is a hollow cylinder apparatus. So, what you see here torque is applied torque is uh, torque is applied here in this form and then you have the axial stress which is acting from the top and then you have on the cylinder external pressure may be due to fluid and then internal pressure and then you the doing the analysis we carried out this is radial stress sigma r this is uh, in the uh, the direction of that uh, periphery sigma theta and the sigma z is vertical. So, all three are there in case of cyclic torsion shear test. The specimen is enclosed within internal and external membranes on which the internal and external uh, pressures can be applied independently as we see. Application of cyclic torque induces cyclic shear stress on horizontal planes, while hollow cylinder test offer perhaps the best uniformly and uh, uniformly and control over stresses and drainage. A specimen preparation can be difficult normally and the equipment is not widely available. This cyclic torsional shear test or hollow cylinder test is not widely available. So, this completes all the tests on the laboratory test including low strain test as well as high strain test. 
but then there are some special tests also which we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you very much for your kind attention.